हरि ओम तत्सत वेलकम टू स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयानंद सोसाइटी अ जर्नी टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब आवर चैनल फॉर द मिस्टिकल मीनिंग्स एंड टू एंजॉय डेली सत्संग वी आर करेंटली एक्सप्लोरिंग द बुक एडवाइस टू हाउस होल्डर्स ऑथर्ड बाय स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयानंद जी महाराज नरेटेड बाय माय सेल्फ स्वामी निखिलानंद वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द इनिशियल स्टार्ट ऑफ अ मैरिड रिलेशनशिप what a husband should do what a wife should do that they should help each other evolve spiritually it is only on the basis of godward movement that you can build an enduring relationship if you take god away from your life your relationship will become shallow it will become body centric or worldly only and thus it starts to um, fade away Ideally both husband and wife should join hands in attending satsang satsang means good association practicing meditation performing religious worship prayer and other forms of sadhana or spiritual discipline never feel that spiritual practices will upset your relationship rather they will promote a relationship that is profound and enduring you are a soul in transit you have had many bodies over many many lifetimes and consciously if you practice the sadhana of connecting with god and if you ideally have a partner that supports you that could accelerate your spiritual movement and you can both grow beautifully together if you are making the time for a little meditation a little prayer a little japa repetition of a mantra or a divine name each day if you celebrate sacred days and fast when possible if you study the holy scriptures such as the ramayana the bhagavad gita or any scripture according to your faith you will bring a special spiritual charm into your married life you will become ideal couple an ideal role model for many you should not develop the idea we are modern and now therefore we should not go along with the old spiritual traditions it is from your faith in religion and faith in god that you will receive special strength during severe problems in life during situations that baffle all your intelligence it is your faith that will come forward to help you not your intelligence at that time people don't know when they are shook up but if your faith is strong god will give you an inner serenity and patience that many don't possess therefore husband and wife should encourage each other towards spiritual development towards being more faithful more devoted more religious and more disciplined when you help each other to be undisciplined and disorganized you become enemies of each other you get frustrated you get angry or stressed out you have different interests and all over things are crazy in other words if you are not harmonized an undisciplined life is the fertile soil for all miseries in life so the focus should be on yoga not bhoga bhoga means sense pleasures sense enjoyments in the western world you are constantly exposed to a materialistic attitude towards the life that considers the pleasures of the senses as the highest goal the moment materialistic people find diminution of pleasure in a relationship they are ready to divorce or move on and get married again many reasons but mainly due to sense pleasures sense gratification according to the hindu dharma this is an unhealthy attitude sense pleasure or bhoga is not the goal of life however when sense pleasure is given its proper place it becomes a means to discovering spiritual union between husband and wife you love each other more when you come together you commune together spiritually and you bring forth beautiful children as a result when pleasure is not held as the highest attainment in life 
it becomes easy for a person to make the deeper adjustments that are necessary for a harmonized family life. Yoga means union with God, not bhoga, which should be the goal of life, to unite with God. They say, man has been created to know his creator. And we forget that in this material world, in trying to uh, run after name, fame, money, success. All that is not prohibited by the scriptures. What the problem is that we get stuck to those things and we make them the only goal of life, thereby forgetting our spiritual progress. And that is the, the point that we need to think hard about. But if both the husband and wife are balanced and spiritually aligned, they can both be each other's support system. So age with dignity. Think of what ha happens to people in a pleasure-oriented materialistic society when they age. They have no control over their mind. They become intolerant and highly irritable. No matter what wonderful ideas they might have when they were young, when they age, those ideas vanish. They might have been bright and relaxed personalities once, but as time passes, they become mentally debilitated, weak-willed, and ill-tempered. The irritability of old people has become proverbial. It is said the wind howls, but it calms down in a while. But not so with ill-tempered people. They continue howling day and night. Do not let yourself age in this fashion. Become like a fruit-bearing tree. Give your fragrance and fruits to all. Let your age be a sign of wisdom, not of frustration <laughs> and anger. If you are not careful, you, as you grow older, the things that you once hated in others will become a part of your personality. However, if you are careful during the Brahmacharya and Grihas stages of life, which we discussed yesterday, you will avoid this regrettable state. If you lead a life of discipline and devotion to dharma or righteousness, as you age, you will enjoy increasing inner peace and spiritual contentment. You will become more relaxed, stronger in spirit, more accomplished in controlling the mind, a source of happiness to yourself and to the people around you. So learn to adapt and adjust in life. In every marriage and in every family situation, no matter how perfectly matched two people may be or how agreeable the various family members may be towards each other, there are many things to which you have to adapt and adjust. There are many unknown things that you will discover about each other and you will face a constant challenge to understand one another and to maintain harmony in a relationship. It is by accepting the challenge and making yourself more disciplined that you begin to discover the deeper meaning behind relationships. Throughout your life as a householder, you are being disciplined by the divine plan. If you were told by a teacher, for example, to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning for meditation, prayer and other spiritual disciplines, you would say it is too much to do. But when your little baby cries in the night, you get up immediately and run around doing whatever is necessary without hesitation to comfort the child. So you see, nature has a special way of disciplining you in family life, of urging you to be self-sacrificing again and again. As you begin to learn the art of sacrificing your little self, of stepping beyond the expectations of the ego, you are learning deeper lessons of life that will promote peace and harmony in the family. This will prepare you for serving society in an effective manner and will accelerate your own spiritual evolution. So always learn to adapt and adjust, be flexible in life and try to avoid situations that will get angry or turn into an argument. Do not be afraid to be real. 
you are striving sincerely to promote harmony and adjustment within a marriage does not mean that day by day there will be perfect smoothness no raising of the voice no misunderstanding no quarrel that's simply not reality we no one is perfect we all have faults but how to adjust is where the growth occurs when householders brag before others saying we have been married for 30 years and we have never had a single quarrel then within the very next year you may hear they are divorcing each other <laughs> so that cannot be maintained life has to be spontaneous and you should have fun along the way also the fact is that it is unnatural to live with people and not face situations of misunderstanding it's simply a fact of life there will always be a little raising of voices a little expression of displeasure a little quarreling if two persons in a marriage relationship never argue nor show any displeasure there are two possibilities to explain it number 1 there is fear and artificiality in the relationship or it is the marriage of two enlightened sages in which case both will evolve but that's the only possibility for most worldly people these a lot of friction is there a lot of adjustment is needed practical guidance is needed but by through this book step by step if we are willing to follow through we will see that every dimension of our life will improve in real love between two people there must be flexibility each one must be able to say what is on his or her mind and the other person must be able to listen ne- neither must be afraid to express themselves thinking if i say what is on my mind there will be trouble therefore let me continue smiling that would simply be artificial and you would be choking inside that is not the goal that is not being spiritual it's simply you need to learn to adapt and adjust on both sides husband should do that wife should do that also if fear controls the relationship it is not a real marriage therefore both parents must learn to adapt and adjust that is the great art in life where there is self sacrifice patience and endurance a deep love develops a love of a higher type that is sweet and sublime but where there is no genuine adjustment between partners where there is only yielding to each other with bitterness marriage becomes a great pressure to the soul that is carried on day by day that's when things are getting worse under this situation of stress life becomes very shallow and even the slightest difficulty or misunderstanding can cause the husband or wife to file for a divorce or move in their own ways which is a difficult journey ahead so let us continue this satsang tomorrow adore god in each other will be our topic of discussion among other things so this is swami nikhilananda see you in tomorrow satsang hari om tat sat